Oh, hey everyone. So on this week's episode of Make It With Calvin, I am down in the garage, aka the makerspace, and I'm going to be describing to you guys the design process behind this. My Sherline's overly complicated, super awesome fixturing slash tooling plate. So let's talk about it. So to start things off, years and years and years and years and years ago, I bought this Sherline mill, which is now nothing like it was when I purchased it. And it's pretty much what got me started in a home CNC machining. And a long time ago, at the adult school that I was taking machining classes at, I made up this, which is the very first ever fixturing plate for my Sherline. The reason why this is nice is it is a row of threaded holes, which gives me a lot more mounting options for parts and tools and things like that than I had on the original T-slots, which are on the mill. Also, it's very nice, say your tool cuts too deep or something, you're cutting into a sacrificial piece of aluminum, you're actually not cutting into the machine, so you don't have to worry about stuff as much. Obviously, you don't wanna go cutting into your tooling plate if you can avoid it, but if you do accidentally do that, it is not a giant thing to freak out about. I mean, it, it, it gives you some safety margin, if you will. So fast forward a bunch of time, and right here is the high torque mill, which is driving me nuts, but whatever. And I decided because the high torque mill doesn't have the RPM capabilities of the Sherline, I decided I should get the Sherline going because most of the tooling that I run is quarter inch and below, and having a 5,000 RPM spindle means I am feeding at painfully slow feed rates and things are taking an absolute eternity. By comparison, the Sherline has a 10,000 RPM spindle. It lacks the horsepower of the high torque, but since I plan on running mostly 3 16 and below tools on here, I think it'll be fine and the higher RPMs can easily be compensated. The, yeah, the lack of Horsepower can easily be compensated for using high-speed machining tool paths and upping the feed rate a little bit. So back when I was in Southern California paddleboarding with my friend and friend Danielle, seeing Joel the 3D printing nerd, picking up the E3D hot end for my Thingomatic, visiting my family, all that stuff, I was able to get this machined, and I'll have a better shot at it. This is the super duper awesome new tooling plate for the Sherline. It is made from an absolutely thick, I believe it's about half an inch, if not thicker, piece of, I believe is cast aluminum. It might be wrought, just regular aluminum extrusion. I'm not fully sure, but I got it for free, so I'm not complaining. The arrangement on here is different than the original, which was just 1032 threaded holes. This one utilizes a quarter by 20 screw thread insert hole, which I'll explain more in a minute, and a quarter in a 251 dowel pin hole. So the screw thread inserts are these special, amazing things, which are great for soft materials or applications where you need to take things in and out of a threaded hole a lot and you don't want to wear the base material. Thanks to High Tech Machining on Instagram, he found me a pack of 100 of these on eBay for about 10 bucks and was also gracious enough to loan me the very special and pretty expensive installation tool for these things. So a huge, huge shout out to him for greatly helping with me with the project with these. Originally, I was thinking of not doing the screw thread inserts just because I was concerned about the price of the insertion tool and the inserts, but thanks to him, this thing's gonna have some screw thread inserts, which is exactly what I wanted, and I think will make this tooling plate last a long, long time, which is nice. Now, the other thing that is nice about this is the fact that it has the quarter inch slip fit or 251 diameter dowel pinholes. What this allows is for me to come along with various aluminum plates and stick them on there and locate them with reasonable accuracy. The main thing is I wanna keep things 
parallel to the machine so I don't have to constantly be dialing things in if I'm running different fixtures or things like that. Most of what I'm going to be using the machine for is one and two sided operations on brass, either sheet metal parts or small brass parts, and having the ability to just take fixtures in and out to speed up the machining process is very, very, very nice. Also, the fact that I don't have to sit there forever and indicate a vice in is a big advantage. So it should make life a bit easier, hopefully. So in another video, I will go ahead and show you guys the insertion of the screw thread inserts. I'm not able to do them right now because when I created the plate, I intentionally did not tap the holes as deep as I could. I was concerned about bottoming out the tap and breaking it in the hole or ruining the threads. So I need to take this over to a the machine shop over at City College and get the holes bottomed out and then I can show you guys how to install the inserts. So I hope you found this episode of Make It With Calvin interesting. If you want to see more machining related videos, I've got some Thingomatic updates on the way. I've got some more 3D printing stuff that I'm going to be talking about, GoPro projects, things like that. Definitely consider subscribing to the channel and following me on the social media links that are down in the description. I might or might not have a giveaway coming up sometime in the near future, so we'll see about that. But I will see you guys next time on another episode of Make It With Calvin. Now let me get off set without killing myself again. Oh gosh, the light is bright. Ah!